is time. It is time to brew your best beer. Brought to you by Beer Grains Supply Company, Brew Tubers Online Brewers Club, Brew UK, Panhead Brewery, Tanner Ritchie, Finney's Homebrew Emporium, Brig Selve, Hackney Brewery, Hashigo Saki, Mangrove Jacks, Sprig and Fern Tavern, Yakima Valley Hops. Right, welcome to part two of the SJ Poor Challenge Reviews. I'm here with Bill of 983 Brew, Brewmaster Ben at Ben's house. This is LE132 UK and it's a robust porter and coming in at 5.5%. Using a recipe that is distinctly similar to another SJ Poor beer, not from this year, from last, last year. year. That I personally don't think it was very good. It was my own. A um, couple of people liked it. I did. You thought it was alright. Yeah, I, I think this is much better than mine. So that's that's the starting point. It's got because it's got the uh, orange curaçao peel, and it's got uh, cacao nibs in it. Quite bitter. Quite bitter. Cacao nibs are adding a lot of chocolate flavour, but it's a dark bitter chocolate flavour, yeah. isn't it? I'm not sure I get it. Are you getting the orange? Because sure to be honest, when I used the orange, no, I, I didn't get it much. It does, I didn't it does stand the bowl with gentle spicing from I use, crack orange, but I'm, I wouldn't say you get on orange sort of on the nose or on no. the flavour at all. Even if you take a sip and you breathe out through your nose, you're not getting the orange. Maybe it adds to the bitterness, yeah. the, the, Maybe. the orange, rather than the... When I used, when I used the um, orange in there, I didn't think I got that. I used it to kind of... Um, Try and explain some of the sourness in the beer, but <laughs> I'm not sure that it actually was the flavour of that. It's but nice. this is quite nice. Yeah, it is a robust port. It, for me, it tastes and it is the stronger SJ than it is in ABV. It tastes stronger. It, it does. Is. Yeah. Not right. to say there's like over alcohol now, but I think it's just because it's so strong and so flavour. Flavour. It just makes me think: is this a ten percent or a? But yeah. It's not, which is good because you could drink more of it. Yeah. Could you drink more of it? It reminds me very much of Ant Rogerson's um, Imperial Stout in the flavour. It's very. Personally, I think that needs another three months in the bottle. Three to six months in the bottle. And I think that would be. I think three to six months, you would have an absolute exceptional beer. Now, because we we tried to brew a porter, as you may know, didn't turn out very well. (laughs) Bit of a problem. But we were worried about how long we had to. um, to sort of get a dark beer to age and this is very good don't get me wrong but I think it could go up another level or two just by leaving it in the bottle so um, to the brewer I hope you've got some of this left sit on it because you're going to have a fantastic beer for Christmas absolutely absolutely. gorgeous overall scores I'm giving it a 7 I'm giving it a solid 7 7 I think I'll agree with that a good beer, very good beer. Good. Cheers. Nice beer, cheers guys. Right guys, next beer up is DA154GB. No other... Catch 22. Note from that, it's a Catch 22 with Mosaic and Simcoe. Does that say what I think it says on the IBUs? We won't know. Um, 88.8. 88.8. I mean, I'll be you. I'll be honest, I would have never have guessed that. I never would have guessed that. I, I don't think that is 88.8. I don't know. It might not have been put it on the label. But, you know, that... that um, the American Pale Ale we had, to me, tasted more bitter than that. Yeah. But that, I think, is really nice. But that's a smooth bitter. Yeah, much really smoother. like that. Grant seems to think it's the mosaic hops that are doing that. Well, we've been chewing the fat over that a little bit because I, I kind of wish there wasn't any Simcoe in there. It was all mosaic. But I think I'm in the minority. Here. I haven't brewed with either, so I don't know. But I do know that is a damn good beer. Uh, for me, I think it's the winning beer. Ooh. I haven't had anything else yet that's come close to being as flavoursome and as for its style of what it is, it's just... It's a 10 for it, me. It is a good beer. It's a very good beer. But like I was saying to you, I, I don't know, I'm getting a little... It's, it's a very familiar taste now. And 
I don't know, maybe I'm just getting a little tired. Familiar is sometimes good. Of, of that, that taste, that IPA taste. It's a good one, but but of its start, as you say, I mean, it's, it's exceptional. If that, Darren said, if that was in a bottle with Colonel Label on Yeah, and we all like the Colonel beers. We've all been to the local brew shop. You'd know, you know no different. And you, and you would be raving about it. Saying that or Beaver Town, anyone like that at the moment. That's... I mean, Mosaic, I think, is one of my favourite hops. And I just wish there was more Mosaic. Perhaps a little less Simcoe. Oh, I think. Yeah, but, really nice beer. Very well done. Overall marks? 10. 10 for me. I'm going to go a 10 as well. My eight. first 10. I'm going 8. Mm. That's lovely. That's very nice That's though. Good. Very nice. Boom. Right. Right guys, on to the next one. Yes. GA. Right guys, we have GA150 GB, which is from GI Fryer, from the Fryer Beer Day Brewery. And it's his Drunken Goblin, 5.78%. Very exact. Now, we are sort of split on this one. I quite like it. It's an extract beer, reading by the label. And my first thoughts were going to be I'm going to taste a, a twang or whatever. But the more I sip of it, it's not. At all like that. I think when I first tried it, I thought initially it's because he used extra. I thought it might be a twang off that. But actually, what the more of this I'm drinking, the more I'm thinking it's. And I said this about one of the earlier beers, which was in part it's, one. It's the whiskey oat chips. It's whiskey oat chips. Oat beers are just not my bag. And I think I think that's for, the thing for me that's it, that, that on the aroma I and a little bit on the flavour is, is sort of. Put me off a bit. I think it's the same for me. I think it smells, almost tastes more alcoholic than it is. Yeah. And that's what does it for me. I've done. I've had a beer myself. A, a, I don't know. I'm not grain, getting too much. I've had an all grain right. kit that I've done myself where it's tasted and smelled more alcoholic than it was, and it kind of detracts from the flavour of the actual beer that's there. I don't know why. Maybe that's the oak chips. I don't know. I mean, one thing I will say, drunken goblin. If that's supposed to be sort of from a hobgoblin type recipe, I think you've got the colour. Absolutely, almost bang on. Touch darker, probably, and you'd be there. Right, but not a bad beer. No, I not don't, a bad beer I don't at think all. It's There's no off flavours. There's nothing. Not. There's nothing bad about it. No, and to me, you could taste it was made with more extracts and not grains. But I definitely on the nose, I, I get a bit of a an alcoholic. But maybe that's the whiskey oak chips. I think yeah. that's what it is. But I for me, before chips, I'm going in, I'm thinking, God, this is going to be a heavy beer. And but do you like do you like beers with oak chips or uh, oak I beers? Innocent gun, that sort I, of thing. I don't. I hate in them. The, in the small amount, but they're not my thing. Well, do you, do you like them? Yeah, I don't mind them. Yeah. I don't mind them. So having said all of that, I've given this a six as the overall. I'm going to give it a six as well. I'm going to go six. Six as well. Right, onward and upwards to the next one. Right, guys, we have got CLO15GB. And we're thinking this is from Norfolk Hill Beer. We're having a bit of a guess. It's a raspberry vanilla wheat beer, 6% ABV. And I'm not keen, I'll be honest. I think the there's definitely a bit of a medicinal smell and we're thinking it comes the from the raspberry concentrate you put raspberry concentrate in at the beginning yeah. at the start of the boil but we were saying it's just almost got some characteristics of a turbo cider stroke yeah that that sort of thing where the fruit is almost i don't know sort of taken over there's not much of the yeah. beer left i know it's a lager malt and 2.3 kilos of wheat malt. I'm not seeing that. So again, clear. though, you won't always get it cloudy with wheat. I mean, I've had no, it. but you're not tasting it either. It's not. But I think that's because it's so. It's just the, the fruits overpowering. The, the raspberries are quite sharp, very sharp, in fact. It doesn't taste like a beer. It, could it be smells. Anything. It smells almost sickly sweet on the nose, and it's a bit almost whiny. I mean, the closest beer. one to compare it to would be. Um, Harry's one that we tried, the Tayberries. Yeah. But 
But that definitely that was still balanced. was, a, you know, there was a bit of maltiness, a bit of a beer underneath it. Yeah. It smelled more natural fruity than synthetic fruit. Yeah, I agree. But there's a definite, there's a bit of a, some sort of medicinal. Almost it's a it's bit, got to be from it's a bit. It's a bit like cowpole. It's got to be, honest. yeah. It's got to be from a raspberry concentrate. It's got that kind of smell to it. The taste is, I think it tastes better than it smells. Yeah, the, the smell sort of spoils it before we go in for the taste almost. Yeah, because actually it's quite clean tasting. It's clean. And sharp, but do you know, if I reckon it'd be interesting, if you blindfolded someone and tasted that, would you say that was a beer? No. Or would you think that might be a fruit cider or something or like fair, that? Or a fruit yeah. cider for me. Because it's very, very fruity. Scores overall. Four for me. Three four for me. Four for me. I hate to do it. Sorry, but it's a three. Right, guys, on to the next one. I'll drink anything. You know, I'm very right, next up is PA one one two GB, which is a sweet stout. A bit of confusion because it says four point five on the bottle. On the website it says six ABV, so we're not quite sure what that is. I reckon four point five is correct from the mm. taste of it. My first observation is how sweet is it? It's not sweet. It's not. It's not bone dry. But it is dry. But it's not. A, it's not like a milk stout. Um, we're getting, up, you know, a bit of coffee. I think that's in there. But carbonation was quite on the high side as well for a for a stout. Yeah. It's quite a fizzy stout. Fizzy's on the tongue. Mm. And that kind of, I think, makes. It, I mean, in terms of the head as well, it's, you're not getting that kind of... I know we've only got these little glasses, but you, you've managed to get some up there. Yeah, give it a swirl when it comes Not getting... Back. But the type of head you're getting is, is a fizzy head rather than a, a, fizzy, than a creamy stout yeah. head. Yeah, it is a fizzy head, you're quite right. But the stout taste is all right. Yeah. Um, and coffee's... Chicory, we've had a bit of a discussion. No one's quite sure. We Cabbage, you think it might be? It looks like, <laughs> it looks like, it looks like, looks a, like a cabbage, but, but I might wrong. We're not sure we're getting masses of chicory. What, whatever what does chicory add to the beer? I don't, I don't know. I can't taste it. I've never had chicory. No, nor me. I don't even know what it is. I don't really know what it is. But it tastes to me like it tastes like a coffee stout to me. Yeah. Okay, no no major off flavours or anything like that. The thing that's really... Right. I think my main problem with it's it is the carbonation. It's the carbonation. I think if the yeah, carbonation was better, down, it would have... It, it, yeah. would, it would have tasted smoother. And it would have probably just gone down a little bit easier. Mm. <laughs> too fizzy. Much too exactly. fizzy for a stout. I've, I've had fizzy stouts. It's just, I don't know. Score time. Overall, Grant? Four for me. Four for Grant. Ben? Uh, five for me. And a four for me. Okay. All right, guys. On to the next one. Right guys, the next beer is SH1201IE. It's a chocolate stout at 6%. The first thing we notice straight away, really undercarbed. Gone from one extreme to the other, but I have to say I prefer it undercarbed to overcarbed. Chocolate for me, quite chocolatey, is more on the aroma than I don't know. Yeah, it's chocolatey on the flavour too. It's put chocolate chips in it. I don't think they've done anything. I'll be honest. They haven't added sweetness or anything. No. But like I was saying to you, I, I'm getting a slight, I don't know, slight metallic taste yeah. in the background. It reminds me of the Grant Baker Porter that I did, mm. and that was with cacao nibs. And I wonder if. I don't know, maybe it's something off that that's giving it a slight metallic taste, but it's a, it's a familiar taste to me off one of my beers, but yeah. it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be there. No. And like we said, it's, it's quite undercarved. It's smoother. It's smooth. It's smoother than the sweet stout that we just had. Quite roasty. I don't know, I don't find it that roasty. I do. Do you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, 
interesting. I, I don't difference of opinion. That's what it's about. <laughs> But I just, I, again, it's like in the back, but I'm, I'm wondering, these dark beers, I'm just thinking, and I know, I know we, just, we tried to do too one, young. How, you know, are they just too young? Because mm. I don't think any of the dark beers so far have, have been, been great. You know, there's been good ones, but the, none of them have been amazing. Um, I so I think just... maybe the people who have done IPAs, you know, maybe they've played it a little bit safe, but I think they might have got away with it this time. Yeah, I think so. Score, scores, I'm going to give it a five. Five for me. Well, the basis I give the last one a five, but I think this is a little bit better. I'm giving this a six. All right. On to the next one. I like it. Right, we're on. Uh, this is R1020GB. And it's a strange brew from Copped Lake Brewery. 6.5% ish. Ish. And we don't, we're not quite sure what style this is meant to be. In fact, there's been some debate about that. So is it, is but setting that aside, what do you think? For a minute. It's not a bad beer. A bit of a division here. No, it's not a bad beer. I like it. Ben likes it. Again. It's got a strong malty base. And it's got Chinook in it. You can taste the Chinook. It's not overly it's not like an IPA, it's not like a pale ale, but it's hoppy, but it's very malty and I, I For like me it's that. too malty and sweet and hoppy rather than being It's almost like an imperial going down the road a road of sort of an imperial IPA flavour without the without the ABV. I think it's sort of like an amber ale, if I'm honest. I think that's the style. I'll ask the question that I that we we spoke about earlier. If this was in a bottle with a kernel written on it, would you notice it? I like it. I don't think you'd notice it, I'll be honest. Whether it's my favourite beer or not, there's no more flavours, there's no astringent sensation. Carbonation's just right. I like it. I think it's a good, I think it's a solid contender. I know it's, it's sort of, good. because it sits in between sort of maybe a couple of styles, it might not be terrible as like it, I like it. And the more you sip on it, the better it gets. You don't like the sweetness, do you? No, for me it's too... See, I like that. I like them. And I think that's probably why. You know the um, the Catch-22 that you really liked, mm. and I still give it an 8. I find that I found that just a little bit lacking in body. And I think you like clean hoppiness. More of a... Yeah. Whereas I like a bit of a malty backbone to a beer. Yeah. And so I, for me, I, I'm not going to mark it down because it's sweet, because... Just because I don't like it, yeah. and you do. But no, but, no, but you, you mark it what you want, and then we're, blend, we're blending our scores anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll get for a me, it is, it is definitely the sweetness that does me. Okay, shall we score it? I'm going to give it an 8, I think. I'm going to give it an 8 as well. I'm going 7. Quite nice, I like that. Right. Very nice. I didn't change that. Cheers. <laughs> On to the next one. Cheers. Right guys, we have RI179GB, it's a Sirachi Ace Saison, you probably won't see that from there, we did pull this out and it was clear, well, ours were clear. well two of them were clear, <laughs> the poor man at the end wasn't, but we tasted his and to be honest, we've tipped a little bit of yeast in because it is better we think with the yeast yeah. it brings out the flavours definitely and it's a, it's a pretty good beer this one I have to say yeah it's all from the yeast you've got that kind of bit of banana -y, but not like heffy not quite there but spicy it's everything real savour should be yeah I think for me yeah slight sourness yeah. to it lovely perfect I'm struggling to fault this one mm. at all this is Mouth a, feels good, carbonation's good, appearance, you know, it was crystal clear, you could pour it clear if you wanted it clean, or, you know, put a bit well. of yeast in it, lovely. Bed. Being heathens, we put some yeast in it, because that's what we like. Fantastic. Mm. I really like that. Although, for me, it's it's up there. Yeah, really well brewed beer. 
RI179GB, good job. Really nice. Really nice. It's a 10 for me, solid. And I think I'll go for a 10 as well. Can't knock it. And we're going to pick... Can we convert? No, I'm going to go 9.5, just to give myself some headroom, but really I probably think it's 10. I'm going 9.5. Lovely beer. Fantastic. Great way to end part two. Yeah, end of part two. We're going to have a bite to eat. We'll the be link back. for the next one will be underneath for Beer Lover 1983 Brew. He's going to do the rest on his channel. But what a way to end. Lovely. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.